It's a great honor for me to be here today and in this hybrid form, um, and I'm glad to see it works. It works well. It's been very good and very exciting to hear a little bit of what has been said today. So we're at the end almost of today. Lots have been said. Um, what can, you're probably asking yourself, what can a central banker tell you more about Cyan? I would say not much, but what I can and what I would try to say is not so much about the technology of Cyan. We've heard we have many experts here but more the view of a policymaker. How can technology help, help improve the system and help us ultimately do our job? So why is the central bank, why is the SNB? Has it put so much weight into uh, this pioneering work uh, behind the creation of SSFN? Well, the answer is very simple. The answer is because it is because we see it as part of our mandate. So you're going to say, well, what is the mandate of the, SN uh, the SNB? No, we do not have a mandate in cybersecurity. Let me be clear about that. But our mandate, ultimately, when you think about what a central bank does, it is what is it that we do? Ultimately, it, uh, it's about ensuring trust in money. Now, trust in money is, is not necessarily a simple thing to do. And it, it's actually multi-pronged. And this is what I'm showing here in the graph. Ultimately, do three things, three really big pillars that help us ensure trust in money. First, you can see trust in money requires what we call price stability. What is it? You only trust your money that you have in your pocket or nowadays in your wallet or your bank account. Uh, you only trust it if your purchasing power of this money remains stable. That's really what price stability is. That is what monetary policy does. This is what we do by setting, for instance, interest rates, or nowadays also intervening on the FX market. But that is only one part. Another part is, of course, ensuring that this money remains safe over time, that the money that you have in a bank account remains safe. That is what we do through our mandate of financial stability. Those two are quite well known. The third mandate that is often forgotten, or has been forgotten, I will say, for the last 30 years, because in fact we have been able to, to solve some of the biggest problems here, is the third mandate. The SNB has a very important mandate in ensuring the stability of the payment system. And why is that? Because your money may be safe in terms of value if you cannot use the money and if you're not sure about being able to use your money when you want to make a particular payment, it is not. You will not have the same trust in your money. And it is exactly this part that I will focus on today because it is exactly on this part that the SSFN is built upon. So what does the financial sector look like? So as I, uh, please bear with me because I'm really going to take you on a very different level, a really systemic level of trying to think what is it that we're really trying to solve here. So if I think about the financial sector, what does the financial sector look like? Let me see if I can go to the next slide. This is what a financial sector looks like. Yes, undoubtedly highly stylized view. But ultimately, this is what modern financial sector look like in their simplest form. And what, like, what I'd like to show you here is very important. The three factors, the three segments I showed you before are exactly on this graph. What is it that you find? You find in the middle the SNB, a central bank. A central bank that is able to conduct monetary policy. How does it do that? It sets interest rates. Basically, it sets the money, the price at which banks can come to the SNB and get money, get liquidity, and we do that in the form of central bank money, or also provide us with excess money that they have. This is monetary policy. Then you can see in red the banks. The banks need to be secure. The banks play a very important role. 
And importantly, what you see, they're really at the cusp, and I'll come back to that, of the blue and the green. The, they're really between the SNB and the private sector. And in green, you see the private sector. That's many of, of you here today are really part. Um, it's very important to have a vibrant private sector. Probably the green part should really be much bigger than it is shown here. That's more for a stylized reason and because I will focus ultimately more on the blue part. But the private sector in green is really where everything is happening. That's where innovation should be happening. That's where competition should, should be. Um, and what you see here, the third part, so you've seen the banks, you've seen the SNB. What you see is the, is the, um, is the arrows, or the, the lines rather, those are transactions. Because ultimately, an economy only works if you can make transactions, right? You have, very simply, you have men and women, you also have a little shop. The idea is the economy works through many, many transactions that you make. And the idea is an economy can only work really on a sound basis if those transactions work well. And this is really um, uh, d d the key part that I will be focusing on. The other thing you see here is what I c are these two colors, because it is very important. It's something we often forget. Starts to again come up again because we have some changes that make us think about the basic foundation of the financial sector. Modern financial sector have nowadays what we call a two-tier architecture. What it means is we have this core, the core, it consists of a central bank and the banks around it. Banks, uh, financial institution in the broader sense, in Switzerland it tends to be bank, or many countries call them deposit institutions. This is where it needs to be very stable. It's a very special relationship between the SNB and the banks. As I said, the SNB often steps in when there is liquidity needs. But there is a counterpart for that. That's why banks are also tightly regulated, because it is very important that they are able to play that role. And then you have the banks are the ones that work with the private sector. They're the ones who give loans, they're the ones to maintain the deposits of the private sector, they're the ones who help payments in the retail world happen. So the core system is really what I will be focusing why. Because if you look at these transactions, if you look at these arrow, you'll see, for instance, I'm, I'll, I'll use the example, if, if a woman is at the store and makes a payment, again, very, very stylized because you'll pay the store, but ultimately the money goes first, it, the money is taken out of her bank account, I'll come to that, uh, how does, and then from one bank account, the money needs to go to the other, the, the bank account of the, uh, of the debitor on the other side. These transactions, which part of this is really systemically important? And it's not the part in the green area. At least for a long time, it hasn't been. Digitalization may be changing that, but for now, the real key element of a sound financial sector is in the blue part. Those are the transactions between the banks, because they combine different transactions, and those, the transactions they make from one bank to the other, the large value transaction, they're over a million uh, at the very minimum, the usually very large transaction, and if one of those transactions fails, the whole system can uh, really have a problem, that's when you get contagion risk. This is why, in the 80s, a system was set up. The system was set up, and, and it is done within the central bank. That's why the way I show it here, it's, if you see in the dark blue, it's called the SIC system, not because it's being sick, but this is the Swiss interbank clearing system in Switzerland. It's an RTGS system. The, every modern financial sector has it. It's mandated by central banks, real-time growth settlement system. What do they do? In fact, they've solved many of the largest problems in payment system. How did they solve the problem? That's why many of us never had to think much about payment system anymore. What have they solved? They have made sure that payments, when they go through, so first of all, all important payments have to go through the system that you see. The banks don't pay each other directly. They pay through that RTGS system. Why is it helpful? Because when a payment goes through that system, it is final and irrevocable and it is done in central bank money. It's a little bit like creating the exact uh, a digital substitute of cash, because it's only when you have cash that you know, when you have cash in the hand, 
You have the cash, you know you have the money, no one can take it away from you. In a digital world, in an electronic world, you never know. Is the money really in my account? Is it still sitting somewhere in between because there's a T plus two or there's a, there's a time lag? So that ability to know when a, a payment has gone through that system, it is in your account, it's as if you have real money because it is central bank money. And by having created that system, you've basically solved many of the problems of the payment system. And that's why, and those were happening in the 80s and the 90s, and we in Switzerland, we have an excellent system that not only is able to transact these large value payment, but also retail payment, which is very helpful. But so the basic point is this RTGS is absolutely crucial to having a secure financial system that is based on a good payment system. So now I'm going to come, how does that link to SSFN? So let me go to the next slide, if I may, or someone can do it. Thank you very much. So payments, what are transactions? You know probably very well, transactions in an electronic world are basically messages, right? And why is it so important that those messages are secure and, 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 secure and, and reliable? It's because the messages, as I say, if I use the example of cash, cash you know, you have the money in your hand. That doesn't happen in the electronic world. You need to make sure through that message that you know where the money is and that you really have it debited, debited or credited to your account. So, what I'm saying is that it is that core system, so that's why I'm showing now only that blue part, that is the system we feel is incredibly important to have the best, with at least an incredibly resilient uh, data communication, that it is based on a resilient and secure data communication system. So how is it today? Today meaning pre-SSFN, because this is exactly what, what we'll do. So we took that system, and we look at how it was before. So if you look at it, um, it was based on an architecture that, by the way, worked very well. So it's not as if there was a problem. It's just there's a lot of development, and we're always looking ahead of future challenges. Today, it has several things that today's technology can improve. One of them is the, this hub-and-spoke architecture. If you look at those payments, it's the lines are from the bank to the RTGS, but the banks couldn't really uh, connect or have a communication across themselves. And also, and this is what you see on, on the right-hand side, how, on what kind of data communication were they based? Well, they were based in this case, because we made them really uh, uh, secure, and they are really secure, but they were using dedicated leased communication lines. They're very good. They're very reliable, they are secure, this is, what, this is why the system works, but as we all know, they're also inflexible. You have to choose your, your own tele, uh, telecom um, agent, you cannot change, and uh, they were also quite expensive. Another uh, way that many people nowadays, and it's also inevitable, is the internet through which we communicate, and we know that is much very flexible, very cheap, but also very dangerous, very unreliable. Well, dangerous may be a bit much, but unreliable and certainly insecure. So this is where we felt suddenly we, with that sign can really help to create how can we create a much better data communication for this part of the financial act, at least as a backbone. And this is where we came to SSFN. So the idea of SSFN, and this is how it started within the, the, the SNB and with all the experts with whom we worked, including uh, six and, of course, uh, 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 many other people, is to create how do we create this isolation domain that really covers this systemically important part of the financial sector, what I like to call the core of the financial sector. So if you look, what an important part is this any-to-any -any architecture. We found it incredibly important. So now banks can really communicate in a reliable, secure way between each other. They can also communicate to us. They can communicate to the RTGS system. And as you know, so this is one thing that's very important. Another we know, and, and I don't need to go through it, it, it does help to, to protect against a number of risks that, that have been really on the rise, the DDoS, the BGP hacking, the clandestine rerouting, that is 
of course, very important. And importantly, the third point, I've heard it also before, and it's absolutely true, is this reliability. Is this ability to have more flexibility because you never know where your problem is, comes from. But what I know being a, 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 at the central bank is no matter what the problem is, that system needs to function. So this is really where we, where we thought about how can we do that. And what is really, in my view, something special and made it really uh, novel? Of course, the technology, but I'm not going to go into how novel the technology. You know this much better than I do. What I thought was interesting by trying to create, to take a technology and create really more a framework or a vision and how can you really make it so that it helps to maintain what really needs to be maintained within the financial sector. And one of the things, so it's what I said, of course you need, you need absolute the best technology, which we have, and it needed to be tested in all of this, and, and you need clever minds, and this we, uh, thankfully we have them, really a lot of them in Switzerland. We have the willingness to performing pioneering work, but ultimately it was about working together. And in this particular case, it was even more difficult for a central bank, when I think about, about my role, clearly we weren't the, the other, we had very good partner, was we had to here make new actors want to work with us in this project. And who were these new actors? The telecom providers. Because without the telecom providers, it makes it very difficult. And we were able to, to, to work with them, and you know now, and we've heard them before, and you've heard them today, there's been a number. Nowadays, we have Swisscom, Sunrise, Switch, that are all part of this network. And in my view, that is an, an absolutely critical part, because that means if, one, if there's a problem with one provider, you can switch to another one, and that provides an important part of that reliability of that, um, of that uh, uh, soundness of the system. So this was really for us very interesting to see how do you make new actors that initially may not see the things the way we see or may not think what is important for them is the same thing for us, but we ultimately really got to realize there is a win-win here. So where do we stand now? And that's also interesting. So you know, I mean, six, and, and we'll have afterwards, uh, we'll hear it from, from Jos Dieselhof himself, uh, six has recently achieved productive network uh, status of the SSFN. But what I found also here very interesting, right, to get there, it's not just technology. Don't get me wrong, without the technology, we wouldn't be able to go anywhere. But it required good governments, governance. I mean, really, it took a lot of thought into how do we create the right governance for the SSFN. It required um, a product owner. Who is the product owner? It requires, again, this accountability. Who is in charge of what? Although, in the end, everybody has a very important to play. Here, six uh, is the product owner. It required certification authority. It required rules and regulation. Very important. It required understanding what happens when things don't work, which I don't want to hear about. But we, uh, the only way you don't get in trouble is when you think about it. All of this goes way beyond the actual technology, which for me is being worked on, works, but it is about working together. And this is ultimately what makes something, in my view, really what uh, makes it or breaks it, and in, in this case, makes it really very effective. So the full implementation, you know, uh, a number of banks are working on it. There's really been launched. You've heard about it. We really hope that to have the full implementation bring all the banks on board uh, uh, in, uh, um, in 2020, basically this year. So let me maybe um, a, few, a few things that I want to show is what are some of the, um, I'm calling them use cases. It's more just how, where does SSFN fit in broader developments that are happening? So one, ex one, one I find interesting is um, in the interesting in the sense you know cybersecurity is, is important everywhere and there's a number of, of um, now standard setters that are really putting up new requirements for, for the financial sector, in this case also exactly for the RTGS. 
And, and what I found is really interesting, one is called the endpoint security. You may remember, um, because it, it made quite the headline, because it was quite a heist, there was a big heist in Bangladesh a few years ago. Uh, about 100 million uh, uh, were stolen uh, from the Central Bank of Bang Bangladesh. Um, and it was, it was through an unauthorized access to the RTGS. So after that, that really created um, a wake-up call uh, to many central banks, and, and much, has, much has happened, I think. Uh, but the, the point was, again, coming back to that picture, and, and, and you see I, I, I maintain exactly the same picture. What is important is that, is that everyone who has access to that network is sufficiently protected. And, and so, so the point, it's called endpoint, so that means every, so the RTGS, every access to that payment system and every actor that is linked to that should have a certain, certain level of security. And this is exactly what the SSFN helps to achieve. But the SSFN has something additional. As you know, in cybersecurity, and in many uh, areas, but cybersecurity in particular, I find it fascinating because ultimately, you are only as strong as your weakest link. And we feel that very much, right? Because we can be really good at the SNB, and, and I, would, I would say we are very good. But ultimately, if our mandate is to maintain trust in money, trust in the financial sector, we need every actor to also be just as solid on cybersecurity. And the SSFN, because of the way it's set up, allows us, or would allow us really, to go all, even to smaller banks that don't necessarily come directly to the RT RTGS, but may do it through another bank. But we can really bring that high level of security to the smallest actors because it is not expensive, overly expensive, it is not overly difficult, and yet helps to provide really a high level of security. So this is something we found really interesting. So this is what I said here is it is economically feasible, which is important. As you know, uh, cybersecurity is only one of the challenges that many uh, 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 institutions have in, in the midst of digitalization where many other developments are taking place. But but it is important to have something that really helps them. Ultimately, we know, we believe it's a great value to all participants, and this is something that FS, SSFN can really help us with. Another use case is an interesting one. If we can go to the next one. Yeah. So the next one is, um, is something... Um, instant payment. It's something that's not yet set up, but it is part, you may know, that payment system, because of digitalization, is one key area where so much is happening. And one of the things we believe is that the payment system is also where you see the most that need, the, the, the need and the demand from society to move always more to what I call a T plus two world, you know, where things happen slowly to a T plus zero world. Today's even um, uh, uh, end users, here I show them in the green part, they want to be able to pay as quickly as they send a WhatsApp message. And so if I look at what is happening today, let me show you, right, this is a transaction. So a transaction, right, it, it takes, and it takes usually two days. You may not know it because you think it happens directly and because you get to pay and, and you're done. But ultimately the transaction, when you think of its settlement, which really from one account to the other takes on average, usually two days. So, and, and, and we believe this, this increases the risk and also people more and more want to, to, to pay much faster. For instance, uh, through COVID, we've seen there's been a huge increase in uh, online shops. Online shops, they want to see the money before they send the goods. So they want that fast service and this is where things are moving. So we believe we need to move also to a world where payments all the way to the retail sector can be done instantly. So very simply, right? It's done instantly. So, so you pay something and immediately, and it's not just what you see, but it's really the money is transacted that fast. You can imagine that a system like this is very challenging. It requires a lot of changes, IT changes, but it also needs to be incredibly secure because before banks had two days, if something happened in between, they had wiggle room 
With a T plus zero world, you have no wiggle room. So you really need an extra secure tele telecommunication system, data communication system in the background. And this is where we believe the SSFN will provide that absolute sound basis to make sure even as we move towards these new types of payments, we will have the ability to do it in a reliable way because unsecured payments is really a no-go for the SNB. But it does show the, um, the, the, the challenges that we are all faces to move along with digitalization, to embrace the innovation, and yet do it in a secure and safe way. Other cases, I, I, I don't think I need to say more. I wanted just to say, of course, there are many other cases. I've focused on SSFN as this foundation of your core system, the, the part of the financial system that is really system, systemically significant. But of course, and, 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 and other uh, critical infrastructure, but of course there are, other, there, there are many other um, Application, I've heard uh, a number of them um, that can be done, whether it's directly docked onto or in the SSFN itself, or whether it's done using the technology that is now available, that's also to be seen. But of course, to all the remote access or home office, we've heard it. Uh, clearly something uh, uh, very exciting that can be used with a similar uh, uh, setup. What we also find interesting is this intra and intercompany communication. For instance, we have an office in Singapore, uh, or also we have delegates uh, um, uh, offices, and they are not. They don't currently. Don't, don't get me wrong. They're very s safe and secure. But but it's it, to be able to use SSFN also um, uh, in in. In these kind of instances, we find it very helpful. And second, that's another critical, um, that's another infrastructure. Uh, maybe Jos will say more. But it's just to say SSFN and the idea behind it really has very interesting other application. The last point I want to make is, an, is, is one that goes beyond. And I don't know if that's the best picture, but ultimately, when I think about SSFN, what is it? SSFN is a isolation domain, right? It's an isolation domain, and, and the way you think about it is that core. What we have created is an isolation domain for that core part where the, the systemically important transaction flow between the banks and the RTGS, and of course, um, uh, whatever it needs to be really directly linked to that. So the isolation domain is my silo in the middle. But we have not just created that isolation domain, right? What we have managed to set up was, is that framework in the sense which is based on the sign protocol, the ability to work together with these different telecoms, which was absolutely crucial to the success of the SSFN, and of course, the access all the way to the end users. Now, we have set this up, and you've heard it works, and we're ready to really extend it, uh, to all the bank, maybe make, making a requirement that they have to have sign-based routers and be part of the SSFN uh, network whenever they come to our RTGS system. But the idea is that that system is now there. So the idea is, why not? It should be scalable to other applications that can use the very similar framework. So this will be interesting because ultimately it will be interesting to see how all the work with Sign and the Sign Foundation, how can we, through Sign, make move towards a safer internet and how will that develop? But I think that uh, this is clearly something that's been exciting work. And maybe here, before I stop, I just want to make sure I thank everybody because this is really, a, this was truly a teamwork uh, between different experts bringing the different types of expertise all together. And when this happens, um, I think we can all be uh, quite excited about the result that we got here. So I will, um, well, I had a conclusion, but the conclusion, I basically said it. It's basically, um, uh, uh, m my second point is that teamwork. The teamwork, and it's also important for Central Bank, it's that public-private partnership that is very important because ultimately it's the private sector that needs to be able to work and and, 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 w and function effectively. Uh, for us, it is a key contribution to cybersecurity. 
um, that we are providing uh, because it is really based on our mandate. That's important. Don't walk away, think we now have a new mandate on cybersecurity. We don't, but it is based from the idea how do we keep uh, trust in our money and the payment system plays a very important role. All right, so I'll stop here. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure I get to introduce Jörs Dieselhof, CEO of SIX, and uh, maybe a few words, uh, Jörs. Um, you've been CEO of SIX since January 2018 already. Yep. Um, and uh, and uh, you have you brought with you a great uh, amount of experience, also working with different banks, including also infrastructure. And uh, maybe instead of uh, saying all the things that you've done, what I want to say is since you've been here, uh, the SNB and SIX has always had a very strategic relationship, a very special relationship, and, and, and we see it here because he will really show also the very important role that SIX has played, uh, has helped us uh, bring the SSFN, but maybe I would just want to say it's not only the SSFN, that is only one part of our job, of yours anyway, mm -hmm. but we're also working on many other uh, very interesting parts partnership group in a um, uh, project, particular CBDC, how do you, Jos is also a um, CEO, or at least of, of SDX, the Swiss Digital Exchange Platform, which is a really world first premiere yep. that works, that has received a license, and we at the BIS and the Swiss Innovation, uh, Switzerland Center Innovation Hub have been able to honor to be able to do a number of projects with you. So yes, it's a, it's a pleasure to be able to introduce you and to give you the floor for your part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you.